G'day there, King's Kids. Uh, great to catch up with the members of God's royal family. Uh, because, of course, if God in heaven is our father and we are his children, uh, we are all princes and princesses. Uh, I'm Arnie from Arnie's Shack. Uh, we are going to be looking at the important topic of keeping our eyes on Jesus as we look into the Bible at Matthew chapter 14 and the story of when Peter saw Jesus walking on the water. Anyway, now let's get on with it. Boys and girls, my name is Professor I.R. Vines, and today I'm going to show you something amazing. I will be working again today with my assistant Hans. We're going to be very busy today as we have two experiments to complete. They are both about water. Have you ever put an orange in some water before, boys and girls? If we put an orange in some water, will it float or sink? Let's find out. We will firstly need some water and a bowl. Hans, can you please go get that for me? Hans, what are you doing with a sausage roll? I asked for a water bowl. The sausage roll does look delicious though, Hans. I think I might just have one after the experiment. Yes, thank you, Hans. Much better. Now we need some oranges. Very good. Thank you, Hans. Now, boys and girls, what do you think will happen when we put the orange in the bowl? Will it float or will it sink? Let's find out. Hans, please put the orange in the bowl. Look at that. The orange is floating. Now let's see what happens when we peel an orange and put it in the bowl. Hans, can you please peel the other orange? Do you think removing the skin from an orange will change its flotation properties? Thank you, Hans. Please place the peeled orange in the bowl. Would you look at that, boys and girls? The peeled orange has sunk. The orange with the peel floats because the rind is porous and filled with tiny air pockets. These pockets of air make the orange less dense than water and cause it to float. This experiment reminds me of the story today about Jesus walking on the water. Focus on Jesus and be covered with his love and grace, just like the orange. Take this away, like when Peter looked away, and we will sink. We have one more experiment to do today, boys and girls. I will meet you back here later, Hans. Now it's time for that sausage roll, I think. Oh no, Hans, I'm not trying to find out if it'll sink. Hello, boys and girls. It's Granny Grace here again with another story from God's special book. 
The disciples, those special friends of Jesus, sat in a small sailing boat. They were thinking about their day. Jesus had preached to many people. He had fed them with just a few loaves and some fish. Now he had sent the people home and had gone up a nearby hill to pray. Jesus had promised to meet his disciples further around the lake. The disciples were so busy talking, they didn't notice the dark clouds in the sky. They didn't notice the change in the wind. They didn't notice the storm coming until it was too late to head for shore. The disciples were strong. They pulled on the oars, but the waves were stronger. They pulled on the ropes, but the wind was stronger. The disciples were afraid, and they were about to become even more afraid. Walking towards them across the water, they could see a person. But people don't walk on water. It must be a ghost, said one of the disciples. Then the ghost called out, Don't be afraid, I'm Jesus. Jesus, walking on water? Peter shouted, Jesus, if it's really you, let me walk on water too. Come on, called Jesus. Peter jumped over the edge of the boat right into the angry waves. He took one step, then another. Peter was walking on water too. Peter felt proud. He may have even turned to the disciples to give a triumphant grin. Suddenly a big wave came between Jesus and Peter. Peter began to tremble. He shouted out in fear, Jesus, help me, I'm sinking. As Peter went down, 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 Jesus reached down and pulled him up, 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 out of the water. Where is your faith? Jesus asked. Why did you doubt me? Jesus put his arm around Peter and together they walked across the water back to the boat. Boys and girls, today Jesus says to you, do not be afraid. When bad things happen, keep your eyes on me and I will rescue you. By keeping our eyes on Jesus, we are saved. Today's Bible verse comes from Luke 18, verse 27. What is impossible with man is possible with God. G'day there, King's Kids, and welcome to Get Active with PJ. Today, we're going to do some more exercises. We're going to try some arm rolls. This is how you do it. Reach those arms around each other from side to side. And roll them up. How high can you reach? And down. That's right. Up. As high as you can reach. And rolling down. Can you turn around in a circle and do it at the same time? That's right! Now boys and girls, our next exercise is called a knee cross. You touch your knee on the opposite side to your hand. Like this. Can you join in? Lift your knees. Touching opposite sides of your body. So touch your knees. Touch your knees. Touch your knees. That's it. This is so much fun. I always love staying fit and active. Are you keeping up, boys and girls? That's right. This is how you do it. Don't stop now. We're going to keep going. Lift those knees. How high can you lift your knees? Well done. Anyway, boys and girls, thanks for joining in Get Active with PJ today. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hi everyone, my name is Nurse Betty. 
One of the things I love to do is to teach boys and girls how to stay healthy. Today, I'd like to talk with you about the importance of eating breakfast. You may have heard your parents telling you that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Here is an illustration of why this is true. Imagine that you're a car and after a long night of sleeping, your fuel tank is empty. Having breakfast is like putting fuel in your tank. Without fuel, a car will not be able to go very far. Here are some of the benefits of eating a healthy breakfast. One, breakfast gives you energy to start the day. Two, it has been shown that breakfast improves our behavior. Three, breakfast increases your ability to learn and focus at school. Four, eating a regular breakfast helps to better manage your weight. So what should you eat for breakfast? Choose breakfast foods that are rich in whole grains, fiber and protein, but low in added sugar in order to help boost attention span, concentration and memory. Did you know that eating breakfast can help your brain? Research has shown that breakfast can give you a mental edge. It keeps your blood sugar levels steady, which helps improve your focus and attention span. It has also been proven to boost short-term memory and creativity. Studies have found that those who eat a healthy breakfast each day are more productive throughout the day. So when you wake up tomorrow morning, make sure you start your day with a healthy breakfast. Boys and girls, remember that Jesus loves you. Take care of your body and take care of each other. Hi, my name's Jay. And I'm Josiah. Our Bible story this week is about Jesus walking on the water. That's pretty amazing, isn't it, Zane? Yeah. It helps us to know that Jesus can come to us anywhere. We can walk on water, but what's can walk on water? First, you need to choose the right rocks. They need to be smooth and flat. Like these ones. Mm-hmm. Find some really flat water. Get down low and throw the rock across the water. It might take some practice, so keep trying. See how many skips you can get. Why don't you try skipping rocks on the water too? That sausage roll was a bit soggy, Hans. Now let's get on with our second experiment. We still need our water bowl. And now we also need a leaf. Yes, that's right, Hans. Do you think we can turn this leaf into a boat? Let's find out. We need two more things, please, Hans a cotton bud, and some liquid soap. Very good. You're doing a great job, Hans. Next, we need to dip the cotton bud into the liquid soap. Yes, that's right. And now apply some of the liquid soap to one edge of the leaf. Very good. Now place the leaf into the water. Look at that, boys and girls. The leaf is actually sailing around like a boat. The soap contains surfacants, which lower the water's surface tension. The soap reduces the force of attraction between the water and the leaf, making it sail. Amazing! This is another experiment which reminds me of the story from the Bible of Jesus walking on the water. Always keep your eyes on Jesus. Having him in your life will make an amazing difference. Just like the soap changed that little leaf into a speedboat. 
Thanks for joining us today with our experiments, boys and girls. We will see you next time. At least for cleanup, we already have our liquid soap out. No, 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 don't spray some liquid rope out, Hans. After feeding the 5,000, Jesus sent his disciples across the lake ahead of him while he went up the hill to pray. When the disciples were halfway across the lake, a storm hit. Waves grew big and the wind blew hard. The disciples were afraid, but Jesus knew where they were just like he knows where you are. Jesus walked right out into the middle of that lake, into the storm where the disciples feared they were drowning. If he can do that for them, he can come to you where you are, in whatever storm you are in. But the disciples were afraid. They thought Jesus was a ghost and cried to God for help. But God was helping them. Jesus was right there. They only had to lift their eyes to see him. Peter, lifting his eyes, called, Jesus, if that's you, let me walk on water too. Jesus replied, come. But a huge wave came between Jesus and Peter. Not seeing Jesus, Peter got scared and began to sink. Jesus, help me! The strong hand of Jesus reached down, their eyes locked, and he lifted Peter back up. He will do the same for us, again and again. Together, they walked back to the boat, and the storm stopped. When we lift our eyes and focus on Him, the storms around us will calm. There is no need to doubt. There is no need to fear. Jesus, our Saviour, is always near. Dear God, please guide us. Thank you. Hey, Andy, today's passage is from Matthew 14, 22 to 32. Uh, I'm going to read up to verse 27, and then you read through to verse 32 after me, okay? Sounds good, Shane. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he sent the crowds away. After he had sent the crowds away, he went up onto the mountain by himself to pray. And when it was evening, he was there alone. Uh, but the boat was already a long distance from the land, battered by the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, 
is this a ghost? And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Oh, Peter said to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. And Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But seeing the wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and took hold of him and said to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind stopped. Shane, do you want to retell the story in your words, the section that you started with, and then I'll do mine? Yeah, sure, Andy. Uh, the disciples were in the boat. A storm came up and they were afraid. Uh, they saw someone walking on the water and they thought it was a ghost, but soon they realised it was Jesus. Yeah. And in the second part, Jesus called to Peter and told him to walk on the water. But he got scared and started to sink, so Jesus saved him. Shane, shall we do the Discovery Bible questions now? Yeah, let's do them. Oh, what's new? Well, what's new to me, Andy, is that Jesus uh, didn't catch up with them by walking around the shore. <laughs> he just walked across the water. Oh, yeah. That would have been a lot quicker than going all the way around. What surprises you, Andy? Well, Shane, I'm surprised that Peter got out of the boat to try to walk on the water. But I guess if we keep our eyes on Jesus, anything is possible. Yeah, that's true, Andy. All things are possible through Jesus. Yeah. What don't you understand, Shane? Well, Andy, well, what I don't understand is how did Jesus walk on the water? Now, every time I walk on the water, I sink. Oh, hang on. Don't you walk on the water every time you get on a surfboard? <laughs> oh, that's not the same. Oh, I've got a surfboard underneath me which floats. It must have been a miracle. Oh, sure thing. Hey, Andy, what will you obey or reply? Well, Shane, unlike Peter, who took his eyes off Jesus and nearly drowned, I want to keep my eyes on Jesus and be saved. Oh, me too, Andy. Oh, Shane, what will you share with someone this week? Well, Andy, I'm going to share that with Jesus, all things are possible. Oh, that's so true. Hey, Andy, do you want to pray? Oh, I can do that, Shane. Dear God, thank you for your word. Help us to follow you. Amen. Amen. See you next time, Shane. Yeah, see you next time.
Uh, would you like to be able to walk on water, King's kids? Uh, I think it would be pretty fun to do that. Uh, what is impossible with man is possible with God. Uh, we always need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Uh, Jesus says to all of us today, uh, do not be afraid. Uh, when bad things happen, uh, keep your eyes on him and he will rescue you. Uh, just like uh, he rescued Peter that day on the Sea of Galilee. Uh, like Andy said, uh, keep your eyes on Jesus and you will be safe. And of course, uh, don't forget to share this important message with others too. Uh, keep walking, uh, keep talking, and tell everyone you know that Jesus loves you and died to save you. And don't stop until everybody knows. Uh, anyway, uh, it's time to go now, King's Kids. I will look forward to catching up with you all again next time. Uh, so keep your eyes on Jesus, stay safe, and God bless.